Hey, everybody. It's Rich Big Daddy Salgado. And uh, another song, another session, another laugh, and another chat here on Big Daddy and Friends. And uh, I'm honored to have one of my dear friends. Also, he's my attorney. So, <laughs> um, who's better? Full than disclosure. Me? Yeah, exactly. A little exposure. But uh, to everyone who's watching and listening, I want everyone to say hello to Darren Heitner of Heitner Legal in South Florida. What's up, Darren? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. You know, uh, just uh, having a few laughs and some chats here on Big Daddy and Friends. And you know what? I'm even going to prove to everyone that you're my attorney. Oh, there it is. The uh, the OG trucker hat. I like That's it. Right. The official Heitner legal hat. Uh, so I am on board 100%. And I will say this to everyone across America who's an athlete, an agent, an attorney, an accountant. This is your man. Give him a call. But anyway, Darren, so let's start from the beginning. You went to the University of Florida. You wanted to be an attorney. What got the wheels rolling? Well, you know, it's interesting. I went to University of Florida without any intention of being an attorney. And I say that even when I knew I was going to go to law school, I thought I was going to be a sports agent. And in fact, I was. I started a sports agency in 2007. I actually interned two years earlier with a group, Career Sports Entertainment, CSE, led by Lonnie Cooper, Keith Grunewald, Mark Carmody, Molly Fletcher. I mean, they were big time. Maybe less so of a talent agency these days, but I got my feet wet and I love the experience working with baseball players, with coaches, broadcasters, you name it. So I went back to UF. This was 2005. And, you know, I, I tried to think, how can I start to make a name for myself? How can I learn more about that industry? And I created Sports Agent Blog. And I created that December 31. 2005, still around today, 15 years later, we're about to celebrate 15, 15th birthday. Wow. So two years later, it was sort of like, all right, I spent this time building relationships. I've learned more about the industry I want to be a part of. If not now, when? Let's give it a shot. So I started up a sports agency from scratch. And it was nuts. I mean, representing basketball players, putting them overseas. I remember we, re we represented Carl Krauser and some other names that some of your listeners may be familiar with. We represented professional bowlers with their marketing, baseball players, and so on and so forth. And so I went to law school 2007. I was there for three years. And during those three years, I kept building and working on the sports agency. Continued to do that for a year afterwards. But in that year after law school, I found myself practicing law. And I quickly realized I enjoyed practicing law more than the time, effort, and energy I was spending on the sports agency work. Yeah. And what's really cool about it all is that now, sitting here, you know, really 13 years after starting up my own sports agency, I'm not a sports agent. I don't procure opportunities, but a lot of my clients are sports agents. And because of that, a lot of my clients are athletes because the sports agents feel comfortable referring me to their clients. So I'm in a way still right in that same profession, mm -hmm. just with a different hat on. I'm, I'm not a, an agent. I'm doing legal work for athletes and agents. And, you know, I know that feeling because for years, everyone thought I was one. And I'm like, I'm as far from being an agent as, as you can be. I'm an insurer. Yeah not a sports agent. And it's funny, my AOL address, so now I'm aging myself, but you know, when AOL was, I guess, AOL 1.0 or 2.0, <laughs> I sat there and I Googled for email addresses and here I am with SPTS agent, you know, AOL. But, uh, you know, I got my feet wet working for Ralph Sindrich and Tom Rich back in the uh, mid nineties, late nineties. and that's what kind of propelled me into the insurance side where I knew how to deal with everybody. And, you know, insurance, as you know, is not the greatest or funnest subject to bring up, but it's a necessity and a need. And right. it has to be, uh, it has to be uh, broached, uh, approached with uh, 
with kid gloves on. So um, well, funny thing about that sports agent uh, AOL email address. I was actually looking back the other day. I think I was I was signing up for a new service, and it asked you to plug in your information about different social media accounts, so it can sort of organize it all. And I looked at what the URL is for my LinkedIn account, and it's LinkedIn dot com slash i n slash sports agent. <laughs> so I'm not a sports agent, but I'm like in the same boat as you. It's like, all right, well, someone sees sports agent, so he must be a sports agent. And yeah. I, I spend a lot of time correcting people who, right off the bat, say, "Oh, Darren, yeah, he's a sports agent." No, well, not really. So. No, no, and and you know what? It's uh, like I said earlier. Um, you know, you've done work for my company, and uh, and you know you you. Everyone knows who you are, and and, and highly recommended. And when any, when anyone in your sector or my sector is looking, they I send them right to you. So I appreciate that. You know because I know uh, what you get. You're getting professionalism. You're getting response. You're getting answers. And there's no dawdling. It's yeah. All right, next. But yeah, when I started my firm, I mean, one of the major things, obviously, you want a lawyer who knows his stuff, right? And who is an amazing advocate and uh, is aggressive when needs to be cooperative when should be. But m one thing that I thought was really lacking in the legal profession was active communication between lawyers and clients. And a gripe that I've heard quite often uh, was that clients would be upset with the lack of communication from their lawyers. And even when they finally heard from a lawyer, you know, it just, it, it, it was lackluster. And so I really built my firm almost seven years ago now with uh, you know, a key construct, that being we would be active communicators and everyone gets my personal information. You can contact me any time of the day and you'll get a response pretty quickly. I mean, hey, hey, you contacted me 30 minutes ago, 45 minutes ago, and here we are doing a podcast. So proof <laughs> exactly to everyone out there remember servicing is the most important thing and you get it from mr hiker so thank you uh, and i have thank to thank you again for uh, your quick turnaround so uh, <laughs> of course anytime it's uh it's awesome so so one of the things that uh i think our listeners and viewers should know is you've written two books mm -hmm. tell us about those two books so it was somewhat random. I think it was 2011 or 2012, I received an email from an individual at the American Bar Association who said that they were looking to create a sports law treatise and asked whether I would be interested in it. And again, I was either one or two years into practice, maybe three, it could have been 2013. And I jumped at the opportunity, of course. So what I developed was a book that ultimately was named How to Play the Game, What Every Sports Attorney Needs to Know. And, and I read that yeah. you sent it to me and you even autographed it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I hope you still have it somewhere you still around. Have it. Uh, yes, you do. No, but it was pretty cool. Move my camera. There's a whole shelf <laughs> it, and it's all the way. So there's two editions now. And, and what's pretty cool is, I mean, the, the second edition, I think, came out maybe three years ago now. And uh, just yesterday, I received uh, an Instagram direct message from somebody who I don't know. But they got my attention right away when they said "Go Gators," and she said uh, that her boyfriend was really wanted to purchase the book for the holidays to to receive a copy. And I guess on Amazon it's either hard to find or extremely expensive. So I sent her a link right to the American Bar Association. And uh, look, I mean, it, it was writing a book is, is is very painful but rewarding. It takes a lot of time. You know, when you first start, it come, the words just pour out. And then when you get near the end and the editing and so on and so forth, it's uh, somewhat akin to torture, <laughs> to be honest. But, uh, you know, I'm so happy that, that I had that opportunity. Uh, I love to read. I love to write. I wrote for Forbes for six years, Inc. for four, and now at Above the Law and obviously Sports Agent Blog. And so... You know, I'm, I'm very thankful for having such amazing opportunities very early in my career. And I, I'm not naive to, to disbelieve that it, that it, it helped me tremendously in growing. And, you know, the, the thing that's funny, and uh, you talk about books, 
I was actually approached recently by one of the big uh, sports writers up here, and he wants to write my book. Oh, yeah? And I'm like, well, wow. You know, that's an that's honor. An honor. You know? yeah. And, uh, you know, I said, I'm going to have to change the names around a little bit to protect the innocent, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, the big joke is, is that if I did write a tell-all book, that I would have to probably leave all the earnings to a charity because I'd have to live on an island with no communication. <laughs> I, I hear you on that. I mean, I, I it's a, especially someone who's a lawyer, right? I mean, I, I have to be cautious to not violate any attorney-client privilege or right. other confidences between myself and my clients. And uh, it certainly is a challenge in writing a book because you want to provide as much personality and as much information from personal experiences as possible. So I, I wrestled with that in, in writing the two versions of my book. And, uh, you know, I, I wonder if I ever do it. I've thought about that. If I ever do a tell all, I may as well kiss my actual career goodbye because yeah. uh, <laughs> no one's hiring me ever again. Um, so, but, but I, I promise you this, if I did a tell all, it would be extremely interesting. I could say the same exact thing. And I think the reason that you're successful and I'm successful is because people trust us and they know we're going to work hard for them. And, you know, we don't kiss and tell. It's, there's no reason to do that because we're not looking for that attention. We're looking to do the right job and protect the client and their right. family and their reputation and so on and so on. So they're, you know, in joking around, I always laugh and I think about it, but uh, you know what, is it really worth it? No, not at all. Because I'd rather yeah. go to bed at night knowing that at least people can trust me and understand that, you know, I've been in this game a long time now and uh, you know, I know everybody and their mother and they know me and what you see is what you get. You know, I give you a service and I give you my word and that's all I can live with, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think about it from my perspective. I mean, because I work with so many individuals and companies that consider each other competitors. I mean, let's say with the sports agents I do work with, if I were to ever violate confidences, I'd never have another client again in that space. You know, the, that's a highly, highly competitive industry yeah. where there's a, a, a serious lack of trust. And so I'm fortunate to, to have built up trust over time with a lot of the people in the industry and they know that they can speak with me and, and trust that I'm not going to repeat it elsewhere. And that if they ask, because I am also, you know, I'm out there, right. I, I have a, a pretty big following on Twitter and, and on LinkedIn and Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. And, and I write a lot. And so while I'm commenting on other things, they have to be confident that I'm not going to comment on private issues that I'm handling. And, yeah. uh, Thankfully, I've, I've done a good job of that, but I always have to be very careful and, and make sure that I am not violating any trust because that would be a very easy way from, for what I've built to be eradicated. So, you know, one of the things that I always uh, get into is uh, what are you currently working on now that's different than what your current practice is? Well... Right, because my current practice is really everything from contracts, intellectual property, and, and litigation. But the big thing that I've been working on outside of that is really the development with uh, name, image, and likeness and publicity rights for college athletes. I was actually on the phone earlier today with a reporter who is trying to get as much information as possible as to you know, where are the opportunities and, and what businesses are going to be sprouting up uh, to try to take advantage of what really should be a multi-billion dollar marketplace that's going to be created just by virtue of the fact that college athletes will soon be able to market their uh, publicity rights for commercial gains. So you know, I'm trying to figure out where I want to be in that space. I think the easy answer is do what I do currently for professional athletes, which is, again, reviewing, negotiating contracts, making sure they're protected from an IP standpoint, handling litigation if it does arise. And we have to imagine that there will be some issues if players don't perform according to contracts, et cetera. 
But do I want to do something above and beyond that? Uh, and and in, in what capacity? So I think that's something that, uh, you know, we're here in December of 2020. It, the state of Florida is ready to enact its law on the subject July of 2021. So there is some time, but before you know it, we'll be there. And so uh, that's something that I'm considering outside of my general practice of law. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I don't know anyone else who's uh, all in like you are in, in regards to protecting uh, the athletes and now the college kids. And, and again, that's what I would say a college kid. Look, you come from a background that you're not, uh, not that you're not intelligent enough, but this isn't your expertise, your area of expertise. You need to always have the right professional. And if you're looking at your name being used and, you know, they're making gazillion dollars and you're not getting a nickel, well, Darren Heighton is the guy that you need to get on your side so that you have a total understanding of what is going on and what you have to look forward to in the future and so on and so on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as lawyers, well, at least someone in my position, if I'm going to be helping out an athlete, I'm, I'm not going to be charging outside of the time that I commit to assisting the athlete. And you know, I, I haven't really uh, wrestled with the idea of whether I'd be interested in getting involved in, in the element of procurement and probably not because, you know, that, that would then make me more of an agent than a lawyer mm -hmm. and perhaps put me in conflict with a lot of my clients who will be operating in the space. And that's, that's one thing I really want to avoid. So, uh, like it'll be interesting times coming up and there, there will, as I mentioned, there will be tremendous opportunity for many. Um, and, and I guess outside of that, what am I work, what am I working on and interested in outside of my general practices? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty politically motivated and I know that's hard to, to fathom in today's day and age where, <laughs> where, you know, depending on what side of the aisle you sit on, you know, you're going to receive a lot of criticism, but uh, I've got, I've started to get involved in local government and I'd like to expand my role in the future. And so that's something uh, that I just happen to be very interested in. Well, you know, I get roped in being, you know, every time I'm on Fox, yeah. Ooh, oh, you're this and you're Mr. Yeah. Right and all that. And I'm like, where do you see me like walking or with the American flag wrapped around me or right. uh, vote for this guy or vote? Totally not my gig at this right. show is non politics, none of that. But yeah. uh, well, I'm laughing too because as I see, you're going to have to negotiate our marketing deal. And you know what marketing deal that is? No, what's that? We're both wearing polo. So oh, yeah. <laughs> we're both re-advertising. I mean, I guess the people that are listening can't see it, but anyone yeah. who's watching, wow. I mean, that's I what, what, what kind of what, what's the price tag on this? I, I I don't know. Well, listen, you're the uh you're the attorney. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I was sitting there the whole time looking at it, going, we're both wearing the same logo. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, as long as, uh, as long as I, you know, it actually takes me back. I'm, I'm thinking I, I, at one point in time, represented Mike the Situation Sorrentino. This is going back years ago. And uh, I remember when there was this whole controversy over Abercrombie. He was wearing Abercrombie on the show. And I think Abercrombie sent him like a letter that he needs to stop wearing the, the product and whatnot. And it became this whole ordeal. It was sort of like a reverse name, image, and likeness dispute. But I, you know, I, hopefully Polo actually would appreciate that we're yeah right. you know, we're not we're not tarnishing their reputation, right? No. Two distinguished gentlemen on <laughs> on a national format promoting. Come on, yeah, right. There yeah, you go. Free, you know. Yeah. Uh, yours is more fashionable because you know you're in sunny South Florida. Mine's a little more heavier because I'm in the Northeast, but uh, still we're sending out the same message. Good, good. Uh, we do. We have a cold front right now. It's beautiful down here. Best time of the year. What's it, about 60 degrees? 55? Uh, right now, it may be. This morning, it was in the 40s. Ooh. Yes, that's uh, blistering cold for uh, it is. sunny Florida. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Sunny South Florida, let me get it right. But uh, yeah. but anyway, so now uh, one of the segments, one of the uh, stories that we discuss here, and it's funny, food 
So uh-huh. we have two stories that I'm going to enlighten you with in regards to food and bring back a little bit of memory. Remember the one time we met at our favorite spot there on the east side in Manhattan, Sarge's Deli. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh that, yeah. I remember that like it was yesterday. Yep. Well, yeah, that was a good time. Uh, well, that was a good uh, time. Uh, you and me and, uh, and Brooke was there, too. My yeah. wife was with us as well. That was yeah, uh, significant. You know, I don't know. Sarge, Sarge just doesn't seem to get enough love. It's never like in the conversation. No, it taxes, doesn't. But... And you know what? They are. I, I, let me tell you, I've been eating in that place for over 30 years. And they have great service. They're 24-7. And I think they're only closed one day a year. Really? Like, I know Andrew, I believe his last name is Feingold. And I'm, I've known him for years. And uh, I used to go in there for what was called the letter B, which used to be turkey, pastrami, Swiss cheese, coleslaw, and Russian dressing. Okay. Like a mountain. Yeah. So, uh, I don't eat that way anymore. So <laughs> I, kind of, I avoid sausages, but I have to go in there to see him for one. And two, also at least enjoy a half of one, you know, but uh, yeah. everything in there. I mean, my matzo ball soup there and, and uh, split pea soup, my two favorite things that used to be, I was like, I'd have that sandwich, but I'd have the soup while they were making the sandwich. Oh, that, wow. I would throw it out in there. <laughs> So that's a, that's a big meal. Yeah, that's a big meal. And, uh, yeah. and then obviously, I was able to introduce you to New York's best pizzeria, Umberto's, and uh, where yes. me and uh, Jared Cat. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, those are some of the stories that we like to share, you know, when we, you know, when we see guys, when I have guys on the, on the interview that I've uh, broken bread with in the past. So, uh, you know, that's I found some of the best times that you have with friends and family is when there's food involved, right? Oh, uh, absolutely. You know, it's uh, and then one of the I may not show it on my body, but we we eat a lot in the Heitner family. In the Heitner no, house, listen, so. I, I will tell everyone if you follow Darren Heitner on his social media, they're in a restaurant, I think, four times a week, and I <laughs> see some of those meals, and I'm like, my tongue is ready to like go through the screen. Yeah. It's not a two course meal usually. It's it's uh, five at a minimum. <laughs> but yeah, we love we love to eat in this family. That's for you're sure. uh, you're but, picking some great spots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I guess I should give a quick plug to my wife who started a, a social media account on Instagram that's I guess close to twenty thousand followers. Florida date night, and she's just crushed it. I mean, you know, we get invited to a bunch of places just to to snack on some of the food and talk about it and do a lot of giveaways and stuff. So it's been fun. It's uh, definitely a little bit out of my element, but I like it. Imagine if I had that kind of good job. Oh my <laughs> Lord. <laughs> you know, I just oh, took man. 50 pounds. I'd put it back on in probably a month. You yeah. Know? It's uh, But that's good. Please uh, send Brooke my best as well. Will do. And, uh, and then lastly, I turn the mic over to you. So now I say, okay, Darren, Ask me something that you want to know about me or you want to let people know. It's all in your court. Well, I mean, I know we've talked about the origin of Big Daddy. I know your involvement of sport, but I actually don't know how you ended up in the realm of insurance. So, you know, how, why insurance when obviously you have all these connections in the world of sport and you can probably, you know, exploit them for whatever purpose whatsoever, but why why insurance of all things a guy that i grew up with uh he was in the insurance business and uh you know i was living in pittsburgh uh at the time and he came out to visit me and you know as you say i know a lot of people so i had introduced him to some potential clients all of a sudden he signs them all up and I'm like, wow, this guy's making a good living. And he's like, yeah, he bought this new car. And he's like, yeah, thanks to you. You know, I got this car because that client, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wow, if he could do this, I could do this. And, and it was about using my Rolodex and using the insurance piece to bring it over to my Rolodex 
and start to like I had a foundation that was already there laying there for me. It was, right. What am I going to do with it? Right. And the insurance thing made this made all the sense in the world. But it took me a while to, you know, uh, get it off the ground because, you know, at the time, I don't know if you remember when I had Big Daddy Gear, the clothing company in the late 90s. Uh, was I the insurance guy? Or was I the t-shirt guy? You know, so people right. were like trying to figure out what it was that I was doing. And then when the Big Daddy stuff went away, my whole focus went to insurance. And that's what I've been doing, obviously, since then, you know, opportunities arise through the clients that I have, through the people that I meet. I mean, you know, the connections I have. So, you know, that, and look, here I am hosting a, a national podcast now, which if you would have asked me a year ago, I would have been like, nah, or whatever, you know, not me. Right. And the same thing with doing the uh, correspondence work at the Super Bowl every year for Fox and Friends. That started in 2008. And I, back then, I didn't go to school for communications, but it was knowing the right people and, you know, doing what I said I would do and, you know, making the connections that needed to be made. So that's what I've been doing since, and, and, and I've been enjoying it. But the, the insurance thing uh, what, uh, is my bread and butter, and, uh, and that's what I think everyone really knows me for. So uh, mm -hmm. that's what I'm here to do. What, what, what next? I mean, are you working on anything outside of insurance? I know you mentioned you've got the Fox and Friends and now the podcast, but anything else? Uh, well, you know what? I'm still, uh, by the way, you're going to get an invite as I explain it. You know, I'm bringing back my uh, Big Daddy Celebrity yeah. Golf Classic next June at yeah. O'Hee Castle. And, uh, you know, I'm focusing on that. And also uh, I'm working on with the Orthopedic Foundation, which uh, I was uh, an honoree last year at their gala. And I was also, uh, I did a first for me, I was the MC. Well, now I want to uh, focus on helping them raise money and, uh, and, you know, make it a point to highlight them. And the other thing that I, and it's different for me because I never expected to be doing this. I became an ambassador for the Share Women's Empowerment Group. Okay. Uh, a friend of mine is the CEO, Angelica Steen Olson. Um, I've been to two events. I've had some of my folks attend those events and support. So now uh, I'm merging uh, my event and bringing them in and, and learning more about that and, you know, giving women, uh, you know, equal rights so they don't have to worry. You know, I'm not the type of guy that's going to say, hey, sit home uh, barefoot and pregnant. You know, you're right. green and you can think and you can do things. Well, you know, women need to know that there's a, that they have a support system and that, uh, you know, there are people that do care and do listen. So those are the things that I got working on now. And uh, a possible uh, sports business show is in the oh. work. Yeah. Oh, okay. good. For uh, one of those big networks out there. Uh, good. I'll share uh, when we get, hopefully, after the new year. And uh, I got two very great, powerful guest hosts that I'll just fall under their wings because, you know, I'm not a lead host, but right. <laughs> I'm the offensive lineman. Someone else could be the quarterback. Right, right, right. So Vital, I'll, but not the QB. Vital, but not the QB. Yep, yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, so all those things are looking ahead in 2021 and uh, and continuing to do work and business with you, as always, because you're great in what you do and everything that you've done for me personally and for other people that I know. So uh, I salute you, Darren Height. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. And uh, you know, I only, I only wish the best for you. So uh, keep up the great work and looking forward to seeing what you do next year, especially if this TV show. Uh, yeah, so. it'll be a, it'll be a whole different world, different element, and I'm excited for it. But uh Listen, tell everybody where they can see you, where they can find you. Give out, give us some of your information. Yeah, easiest is social media, uh, at Darren Heitner, D-A-R-R-E-N-H-E-I-T-N-E-R. -E -E and law firm name is Heitner Legal. It's HeitnerLegal.com. Probably the easiest places to find me. And uh, I'm pretty, as I mentioned earlier, pretty good at responding. So if you have any questions or want to reach out, feel free.
Well, I will say this, that you are very active, just like I am on social media. And uh, the world, if you're not watching, watch, pay attention, learn, because you can learn a lot of things. And if you need the right guy behind you, Darren Heitner is the guy. So thank you, Darren. I appreciate you being on and uh, we'll do this again. Hopefully when uh, I have the big camera behind me or in front of me and uh, we'll do it on a grander stand. So uh, I want to say happy holidays to you, Brooke, and your family. And uh, again, thanks for being on, Paul. I appreciate it. Same to you and stay warm up there. All right. You got it.